So as a parent, how do you get over the fear of a child falling off the side of a cliff? <laughs> ah, do you have that fear, Josh? Ever? Well, yes, you do. I, I do. I have more fear of them falling off when I'm not with them. Yes. If I see them... So Makes that's me nervous. That's one of the things. When you go with kids, you need to. <laughs> I always pre study the trail as yes. best I can via some sort of t topographical map, or especially if we're bushwhacking. If we're on more of a trail in a state park, it, there may be something I may not have to do as much. But being aware of this trail's running across the edge of a bluff, the end is an overlook. What sort of mm -hmm. things would be there that a kid could fall right. into and being aware of that and allowing how far they get from you. Usually we keep our kids pretty close because they're young. They need to be very close to us. Yes. But keeping knowing that, okay, we're getting close to a bluff. We're holding hands at this point or we're staying. You, you are not going further mm -hmm. than this amount from us and yeah. things like that. I don't like to keep the kids on the side that's away from the bluff because yeah. I have a fear of heights. <laughs> Yeah, the heights bother it her. It bothered me, and then having kids bothers me a thousand times worse. Not for myself, but I can picture all the bad things that can happen. And so we get close, and I go, ah! I'm a little bit more of an optimist. <laughs> You're a little bit more of a pessimist. Only on those things. On, yeah, we're on those we're things switched sure. on other things, but yes. But, like, I'm okay with you taking them, because I trust you 100%. I don't trust myself, because I'm a klutz. And I'll trip over air. <laughs> yeah, the main thing so. is going to be staying within. I say staying within your comfort zone with some reservation because sometimes you need to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. But sometimes when your kid is with you, it's not the time to do it. Yes, and you know, you have to know how well your kids will respond to you. Like, are they going to stop? If you tell them stop, if they're not going to stop when you tell them to stop, then they have to hold hands. Or if, or yeah, if they're not going to hold hands, it's then it's they just need to something that you're I mean, not going... With young kids. Well, yes, it depends on the age. Yeah, age makes a big difference. Then, Ours are all young, so we speak a little bit more from that perspective. But then if, like, you know it's going to be a difficulty to prevent something, then you just don't do those trials. You choose a different trail. Yeah, if, if heights mm -hmm. really scary, you might stay away from overlooks a little bit more and gear a little bit more towards waterfalls or, least, or some other type of scenery that's maybe not a sheer drop have, off. Looking to see if they have a fence that is actually a well-maintained fence. There's some places that have fences that are there just, hey, stop. That really, if you leaned up against them. Yeah, a lot of railing. <laughs> a lot of railing at state parks, any parks, anywhere. Railing is not childproof. Very, very rarely is railing childproof. Most of it, they could slip through. They could Push climb up. over or through or just fall under. I've yeah. seen just gaps where your kid could just fall through. So don't trust fencing to keep your kid yeah. safe. Your kid is it your responsibility. Help. So take it seriously yeah. because the last thing you want is your kid falling off a bluff. So it is something that you need to have some fear of and respect but it's not something that should necessarily keep fear. you from going. But it may just make you be more aware of, okay, we're not going to get any closer to the edge than this. So mm -hmm. you don't want to push yourself too far. Yeah, and talk with your kid before you go in those situations. Say, hey, we're going to go, and when we get there, you have to be careful. You have to stay close and tell them why. And a lot of times the kids get that. Yeah, depending on the I age, like. they may understand it some. I know our, our six-year-old gets it a lot more than she used oh, to yes. and definitely respects places more. But then sometimes she also wants to push harder and go closer to see more things, maybe because she sees other people do it. Competitive. And and things like that. So it's it's kind of a learning curve on that. I'd say don't push yourself too far. If you are really scared of heights and could not be able to keep yourself safe you definitely don't need to go right with your kid I mean, you could still go you just may not go as far right 
sometimes we've gone to a trail and we've decided, okay, at this point we're going to stop because we're not comfortable going any further with our kids. And we turn around mm -hmm. or we go with the expectation that there's a really amazing view here, but we may not go all the way to it. We may just get close well, and look, turn around. We'll, see. we'll assess there and see if we think it's safe or if we need to turn around. So yep. I don't know that you'll ever get over the fear of it and you shouldn't necessarily get over the fear of it. You should definitely respect it at all times because mm -hmm. that is not how you want your camping trip to go or your hiking, hiking trip. trip. <laughs> Either one, you might be doing both. Oh, yeah, we do. It's your turn. Do you let kids go first or only adults? And the answer to that would be, um, just depends on the time. We typically let, if, well, most, of, and the location. If we're not near anything that's dangerous, we just kind of let whoever go as long as they stay within a certain distance and they can hear us and they obey <laughs> when we tell them to stop but um lots of times it's it's our daughter who's in the front and she she likes to go fast she wants to go and be the first person to do this that and she sometimes she just keeps going and so then that's when she gets told okay no you have to go in the back because that's the only way to keep up with you and yeah that's kind of we didn't get any questions about like discipline on the trail and discipline is going to be different for everybody but everybody is yeah. if if she's up ahead and she's not listening to us well then a lot of times she's going to get pulled back and either maybe walk behind us or just walk with, with us, us and you're going hands. to stay with us or hold hands and sometimes she does not like that <laughs> she hates that currently but that stage it is better for your kid to be a little unhappy and a little and getting disciplined and learning to listen right than for them to not listen and fall off a cliff yes it just is and that's that applies to all of life yes <laughs> there's many little lessons that can be taught to avoid the consequences of large lessons so yes um so yeah the kids run ahead sometimes but it's usually all the goal is always Definitely within together. sight and definitely within hearing. Yes. And that varies depending on the trail, the place. Yes. If it's How a trail we've hiked many it. times and we know the trail very yeah. well, they may be able to get a little further. If we've not been there, we know there's something dangerous. They're not getting far away. Right. And sometimes the time of year makes a difference too. Yes. Depending and it also on depends on out there, so. people. Like if there's people around, they have to stay a whole lot closer than if there's a nobody there. Yeah. They, I, it's just, I you don't, never know. You never know. Age. You it's, never know if something's going to happen. unfortunate, but. So they have to stay yeah. a lot closer if there's more people out. But if nobody's there, then, then as long as you can hear me and I can see you clearly, and I don't have to yell at you for you to hear me, it's not a big deal, really. Yeah, it's not It's not 100% this is how it's going to go. It's going to be assessed by a child, by situation, by the hike, by mm -hmm. the parent. So that's something that each parent has to... A lot of this is knowing your limitations, knowing yourself, knowing what your capabilities are, knowing your kid, knowing... Yes. So a lot of it is just and assessing yourself and seeing what you and your kids yeah. can do and how you need to So you just to have to get out there it. and do it partially to, to figure it out. That one, there's another question on this oh, one. No. How do you accommodate the different skill levels? <laughs> oh, well, that's when the whole her walking behind us helps um, because that keeps her from going faster. Yeah, I'm trying to keep from getting spread out on the trail sometimes. Yes. Because you, well, we just. It's also the great thing with us having two people, two adults, we can one of us go with the faster one for a little bit and then say, Hey, we're going to stop. We're going to wait and let whoever's behind catch up. Um, because that helps a lot. Yeah. Basically the littlest kid's going to go the slowest if they're walking. Mm -hmm. So someone's going to go at that pace. And so we either all go at that pace or usually what happens is we spread out a little bit and then the person up front stops with that kid or those kids Mm -hmm. For a second, lets the others catch up, maybe at a waterfall or something scenic or a cool rock, a spot that's good to sit down, something. So Anything. we don't, we usually try to stay pretty close because it's kind of, 
It's a family affair. Right. We want to hike together. But we don't we, just, I don't want to just take off one of the kids and not get to talk to Sarah right. or not get to talk to one of the other kids. So we, also, we regroup regularly. Yes. And the order may vary. It does. Especially because the little one chooses who he wants. <laughs> a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. The, switches. <laughs> the youngest one will bounce between <laughs> whoever he thinks will take it the easiest on him hiking. Sort of. Sort of. I know. Sometimes I, he I just needs a change. Too. Did I call him the youngest? Yes, you did. I call I, him the youngest because he's the youngest that's hiking. The other one's getting carried. Yes. And we'll get into carrying kids another time because that's complicated. We're already probably, I don't know how long we've been doing this. Terribly long. My turn. Yeah. Get those to me. I didn't read it. What is it? What are some good easy trails or good slash easy either way that you would recommend for kids five and under? Five and under. Um, so since we're in Arkansas, we'll just use that's where we've hiked the most. And we're central, so most things are central. That yeah, we know. we're near a lot of good places. So I would just go to. I would start at a state park and do like Pettigeen, and do like the, the Rock House Cave Trail. It's a little loop with a spot through the middle. It's very simple. A lot of cool rocks. Stuff just let yeah. kids walk and, and see. And you can take a couple different routes through it. That one's really easy. The Rock House Cave Trail is maybe a little bit harder. But it's got turtle rocks and stuff that are really neat to look at up there. Um, if you're up closer to like Fayetteville or something. Um, Devil's Den has... I think their CCC Trail is really short. They've got one... I think it's the Lee Creek Trail. You could kind of just do part of it and go along the creek. Kids love going to creeks and just throwing rocks in the creeks and watching the water and sticking sticks in the water. And kids love creeks. Just know they can slip in and get wet. And yeah. So then they mind. get wet. So if it's cold, they may get cold. So take a change of clothes <laughs> yeah. or have them in the vehicle. But that would kind of be, you can make any trail kid friendly but if you want to do a whole trail you're going to, have to probably find something fairly short till they till they work out if they've been hiking yeah. i mean ours it depends on the train if it's an easy trail mm -hmm. our two-year-old can do five-ish miles yes. with some help and maybe being carried some and multiple snacks a lunch break and you have to hit it just right in the top period time of day otherwise he's yeah it tired. can be hard like during the time of day is exhausting um, for him he will need a nap in there if he's going to do that far so he'd be carried for part of it yeah to do to that distance so yeah it's kind of hard to say those are the trails that pop into my head there's a ccc trail at devilston that's short you just go around to the ruins ne nebo there's Nebo doesn't one. really have a short trail. It's like the rim trail or the, the one to the waterfall up there. Is that short? I'm just yeah. I you know, could just do you could just do a portion. Is probably the best option on yeah, some of them. It's the just to go so one far is and the come back. Trail. It's pretty much strollerable if you have <clears> a yeah. If you got a kind of a semi off road larger wheels like bicycle tire yeah. wheels, you can you can stroller the bench trail at Nebo. We've done that several times. Mm -hmm. It's three four miles. Four, I think. Four. It's a little bit further, but you can stroller it and let them walk some. So, so if it's just the kids limiting you, then that's yeah, that's the that's areas we're the most familiar with. So, yes, kind of hard to come up with exact examples. 